is a paid program. The opinions and views expressed do not reflect those of Bloomberg LP, its affiliates, or its employees. Hi, I'm Jane King, and thank you for watching. This show is all about public private and blockchain companies. We bring you the innovators behind the companies making the headlines in that space. Some are sponsored, some are invited, all are curated and focused on telling you, the viewers, their story. Here we go. Vivo is an emerging biomedical device company focused on the licensing and commercialization of innovative medical devices for pets. And with me is the CEO, John Lai. Welcome, John. Good to see you this morning. Thank you, Jane. It's a pleasure to be here. So big accomplishment for Pet Vivo. You have achieved a major milestone uh, with your NASDAQ uplisting and the closing of significant financing. So congratulations on that. And kind of tell me a little bit about how does that position the company then going forward? Thank you. Well, it allows us to really aggressively push the marketing of Cush, our product for treating osteoarthritis, as well as bring in additional salespeople. I think our forecast is we're looking to bring in nine additional salespeople over the next 12 months. So it also positions us from the standpoint of really beefing up the production staff that will allow us to get the half a million units a year, which is significant. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure this is a growing area. Now, you deal specifically with osteoarthritis. So, and um, you're going to be treating canine, uh, equine horses. I mean, tell me a little bit about osteoarthritis. Like, how big of an issue is it with, with animals? Sure. In the United States, osteoarthritis, there's about, I would say, about uh, 4.8 billion market hmm. for treating OA. But on top of that, it's been growing at 7% a year. And with COVID, it's actually enhanced that number because our dogs, believe it or not, just like people, gain weight. And when you gain weight, you have more arthritis issues. Uh, so we got a lot of drivers behind us as well as the humanization of the pets. So consumers are willing to spend significant amount of capital uh, to improve the quality of life. So basically, you know, the numbers really drive itself through um, a typical person that was willing to spend treatment for a dog in 2012 was about $1,700 before they refused treatment. Okay. In 2020, it's uh, $10,700. So you see this in the Okay. Yeah, the humanization of the pet family has really come in. And a lot of that's demographic drivers. You know, you look at less and less people are getting married, less and less people are having children. Hence, they're willing to spend whatever it takes. Plus, on top of that, you know, it's recession-proof. The sector is very recession-proof. That's true. And I, I take a walk a lot, especially in the summer in New York, and there are pets everywhere. So all kinds of dogs, <laughs> sizes, big, little, you know. So now yeah. you have some stories about how you have helped pet parents. Can you share a couple of those? Sure. Um, not only do we treat osteoarthritis, but we treat other joint inflictions. Uh, so we had one dog uh, at nine months old. The owner got diagnosed, uh, the dog that had um, congenital birth defect. So its hip could not be used on the rear left side. Um, so the left leg was extremely small relative to the right leg. The right leg got really big because it was overuse. We did the injection and it took about three weeks before the owner noticed improvement. And the owner, after about six, seven weeks, said the dog was running pretty normal. And on that single injection, it lasted seven years, which oh. amazed us because, wow. you know, we think the product should last at least a year, and we're seeing beyond that. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, and um, say so I, if I have a pet and I notice that they have some, they're walking slow, slowing down, something like that. What would be a good place to start? Can I just go to a vet or go on the line or what, what should I do? Well, you, you stand, generally go to your vet and then they do an x-ray. Uh, and a lot of them can tell just by the movement of the dog gating wise. So then at that point, you know, you at, you, we're in the process of educating a lot of vets at the major trade conferences and so on about our product. Uh, it doesn't require any specialized training to do the injection. It's called an intraarticular injection. And you can actually, believe it or not, go on YouTube and punch an intraarticular injection. They'll show you every injection of every joint for a dog. Okay. <laughs> uh, it makes the fun that go, wow, this is pretty, uh, it's, it's not simple stuff. Your average person should not be trying it. You know, let the professionals do the injection. Uh, and within the after the injection, generally within 48 hours, you notice a tangible improvement in mobility of the animal. And it actually improves over a period of time because the particles that are injected actually starts to form a scaffold. And so that actually enhances the cushion that's allowed between the joints because osteoarthritis is basically bone on bone contact. So this augments the existing cartilage, so it tends to provide support for the existing cartilage so it doesn't get damaged. And then as it starts to uh, solidify, I would say, it acts very much like a massive amount of wet sponges between the joint. And every time there's impact, it actually moves the particles, which ends up lubricating the joint. And that's what your cartilage generally is. There's synovial fluid in there. And then when there's impact, the fluids move. So it functions just the same. Okay, interesting. Well, congratulations again. Best of luck, uh, John, with Pet Vivo. I look forward to getting more updates. Well, thank you, Jane. It's been a pleasure. Need hearing aids? Tired of paying $5,000 or more? Tired of making multiple trips to have your hearing aids adjusted? Now you don't have to. Our Hear IQ 4 medical grade hearing aids are fully rechargeable, Bluetooth compatible, and start at under $1,000 for a complete set or monthly payments of $44. Our hearing aids are self-adjusting using any smartphone and features remote programming by hearing care professionals without you ever leaving home. Order your pair today at MyHearIQ.com. Well, it has been a big week at Finex Flow. The company launched uh, basically, and I was just talking to CEO James Gillingham about the two years of preparation, James, and you launched. So talk to me about that. What was that like, the launch? And and I guess remind our viewers again what Finex Flow does. Yeah, sure. So uh, the launch went absolutely fantastically well. So I was really, 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 really pleased with that, to be honest with you. Um, before I delve into exactly what Finex Flow does, I would just really like to say a big thank you to our community. Our community has like, like done, done an amazing job. They've supported us pretty much since, since day one. So, so I'm very, very pleased and happy. We, we've been onboarding a lot of retail customers uh, this, this past week. We've done fantastically well there. We've also just onboarded our first institutional client, BK Coin, which is a, which is a crypto hedge fund. Uh, really, really pleased there. And we've got many, many, many more institutions that are also signing up. And then, of course, I, I'd really like to say um, an absolute huge thank you to all of the Finex Flow team globally around the world, whether you're based here in Singapore, Cyprus, Europe, um, or, or, or the US, Miami, or, or New York, because we, we, without those magnificent minds, none of that would, none of this would, would even be possible yeah well that's great and i mean you're right i mean it takes like a ton of people to pull this off but you're you're leading it so uh you must have been uh you know an, an effective leader to be able to get this to have be a smooth launch yeah i mean like I, I, I have, I have to be extremely dynamic. We have to be able to to, to push very, very hard, and, and obviously you have to be able to mo motivate a lot of people globally to make sure that, that we all uh, are unified and, and be able to push things forward efficiently, effectively, and, and, and roll out on time. And that's 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 something that we that we've been able to do as a team. Mm -hmm. What's been some of the early feedback? I know it's just been a day or so, but what's been some of the early feedback you've gotten? 
So the general feedback, to be honest with you, Jane, has been absolutely amazing. I mean, like people love the UI, they love the UX. Um, we, we've, we've got the multi-screen charting, but then there's been a lot of people that have also been looking at, at the aggregated order book. So we actually have an inverted spread. So anybody that actually looks at inverted spreads, it means that the, 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 the price that you're buying, you can actually buy and sell at the same time and make money from it instantly. So it's basically a negative spread, which is nobody else in the world can actually offer that. So that's 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 absolutely amazing. But there has been some other constructive feedback. So there's been um, some some feedback with regards to trading pairs. So right now we only have Ethereum, Bitcoin, B, uh, USDC, and T available. We are adding um, after this feedback, we're adding another eleven alternative coins to be traded within the next week or so um, and then we're going to be adding another 10 15 every single week um we, there, there've also been feedback in regards to platform staking um so instantly we spoke to our blockchain developer and he's now working on the staking contract so that's something that's also super important to listen to the feedback of, of, of the people and and then obviously trading um the fxf token so our customers really want to be able to uh, to, to to trade the trade fxf again against USDC, T, Ethereum, et cetera. Um, that's something that we're also working on, on, and that's now on the roadmap, and that will be rolled out within the next couple of months. Congratulations, James. I mean, it's awesome to see you have such a smooth launch, and we, we've talked over the past several months and leading up to it, so it's great to see it kind of like, uh, come to fruition. Really good to see you again, Jane. Thank you so much. Okay. Globex data through its secure product has a lot of answers to hacking questions, cybersecurity, some of the things that we're all been dealing with. And it seems increasingly over the past couple of years with me, uh, the CEO of Globex data is Langahi to explain a little bit more. And, and Alana, I know that you launched in mid July. Um, how was that going? Uh, doing great. Hi, Jane, and hello, whoever is watching us. So we started to an official launch in the U.S. July 15. This started with advertising on NTD Network. A um, few other things we're doing, our Newsmax segment, our secure segment, that's now every Sunday. And we have seen a month-over-month -month increase uh, over a 1,000%, so it's astronomic. So I like to say that because we did save over a thousand identities so far uh, because of the hacking issue and our features that prevent hacking in many ways because of our privacy uh, regulation, our software and so forth. We saved so far the American public $30 million, uh, $30 million in identity theft recovery costs because it costs on average at least $30,000 Mm. for somebody to get back their identity when they're being hacked. And, you know, you don't need to be a big corporation. It affects everyone. Mm -hmm. So the subscription rate has gone up dramatically. Our monthly recurring revenue, obviously, is going up. And so far, because we started from the 12th of July to, to, to now, we're not even the 12th of August. And in August, we also see a dramatic increase of over 2,000% in revenue compared to the same period in July. So of course, we're not gonna expect a thousand percent increase every month, but it proves that what we're doing in the marketing is definitely working and we have a lot more planned in the coming 18, 24 months. Okay, well, let's talk about that a little bit because I know you've been doing a big marketing push uh, in the US with your launch as well. So any plans for that or expansion of that at some point? 
Sure. So we started uh, gently, as we like to say, and then, you know, kind of doing A-B testing to see what works. Uh, what's coming up in September onward, we're going to have more advertising on Newsmax. We're going to have CNBC, Fox, Fox Business. We have a 30-second commercial. And then mid-September onward, we're planning to hire and implement with that company and we're planning to hire this company that will help us through artificial intelligence targeting people susceptible of buying secure products. And it's not just consumers. Uh, we're launching the business services as well, which I can tell more in a little bit about that. Once businesses get to see our uh, features and our advantages, a lot of them are going to switch to us because we don't use big tech and open source and so forth, and it protects them. And IBM came up with a study last year that each hack cost a business three and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. so that's a lot of money and it's better to pay us your $10 a month to protect yourself. <laughs> so we're going to go all over TV. We, we just launched, uh, sorry, we did, we're doing so many things. We just launched over six subway station we launched 155 156 digital panel with secure privacy has arrived and that's from uh, 72nd and 2nd in new york 59th street columbus circle 59th street 14th street union square fulton stop and wall street and we just started those we're going to continue throughout the year and into next year so we're doing a lot of visual and media Mm -hmm. And now we're going to layer the artificial intelligence to really target mm -hmm. businesses and individuals that go on websites or anywhere that are looking for solutions like ours. And in the future, once we sign it, we will announce who the company uh, will be that we're signing with. It's a publicly listed company, so I can't disclose right now the information, but we're very excited. Okay. Now, also, Microsoft had like a recent intelligence report about how the hackers are getting craftier and smarter. I mean, I think, you know, we, we can certainly see that. How, how would your products address that? Would they be able to address these more sophisticated hackers? That's a great point. So that hack you're talking about, they basically use email phishing, which is creating an email with a forged identity. The, the email phishing is a common thing. But now they're using SharePoint, which is a file sharing system of the Microsoft ecosystem, to get in businesses and people. So what we do at Secure that is different, we basically use our Secure Send email solution, which lets you send an email to one of your collaborator or somebody outside, even they would have Gmail or Hotmail or anything else. And that whole email that you send, and when they reply back using secure reply, that entire transaction never leaves our Swiss encrypted server environment. Because the basic concept of email is, if you're still secure, like you're sitting at NASDAQ, they have a great system. But if you send an email outside to a client, the minute it leaves a NASDAQ server, it becomes like an open postcard. Uh, and then they reply back, and that's another open postcard. And that's where hackers get in. 95% of all the hacks are done through email. So our alternative is to use secure send when you have the secure email system. I can send anybody an email and they can reply back using secure reply and they simply have to click on a link and you can protect it. You can do password protection, time limit, expiration, and even how many times the recipient can read. But the big danger is always when they reply back, they always reply using their email. Mm -hmm. So we alleviated that by having them get into our server. It's just literally a click and you click secure reply and you reply back. And another great thing is that you can have huge files attachment without mm -hmm. uh, cumbersome for, for the recipient. So we use that. We have secure messenger uh, that lets you send a message, an instant message to anybody even outside of secure. And they can reply. They can use a secure browser to chat with you. They don't need to buy secure. And then when you're done, you terminate, you click. The whole conversation disappears from everybody's device and our servers. Yeah, well, very interesting and timely because, I mean, we've just been hearing about hacks on a daily basis. So thank you so much, Alon. I look forward to more updates. products.com thousands of products and al simon we we pad inventor company
this is a decentralized cloud. And with me to explain exactly what the company is doing is the CEO, Vishnu Korde. So welcome, Vishnu. Hi, hi, Jane. Thank you for having me here. So let's just start with a summary of Stack OS. What are you doing? Absolutely. So Stack OS is a decentralized cloud and an infrastructure protocol. And we are in, in, in the business of you know, creating an environment, a decentralized network, where individuals around the world will be able to provide the compute resources, while developers will be able to click a button and run applications on the decentralized cloud. Now, the white paper mentions that Stack OS decentralized cloud was born out of necessity uh, to solve its own problem. Can you explain what led to the founding of the company? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, earlier Stack OS was called Integro and uh, we were building a decentralized learning management uh, system where, you know, we could reward people uh, for, for their, you know, uh, for, for learning basically. So, you know, what we thought was, and, and our core to our mission was we created a decentralized platform, but, you know, all the smart contracts which were there for Integro, they were running on Ethereum, which was decentralized, right? But all of our infrastructure on which application was running was centralized. So it wasn't really fair for us to call us a decentralized network if it were actually centralized from the compute system point of view. So that's when we started to build something called IDAL, which was Integro's decentralized application layer, which is now called Stack OS. So uh, for us to be able to really call ourselves decentralized, we you know, created Stack OS, and that is why it was kind of important for us. Mm -hmm. What other problems then have you been able to solve along the way? Yeah, so you know, if you, if you look at this entire um, system, right? So when you look at the cloud providers, the centralized cloud providers like AWS and GCP, they're really good, right? But the problem is that uh, when people want to really deploy applications, they require DevOps engineers who know how to architect the environments correctly. So what StackOS does is that the DevOps engineers are pretty much made redundant where you do not need engineers who would be able to, who would need who would be needed to set up these cloud environments, um, uh, and you know that's one of the big use cases I think maybe you know, what what we try to solve for. Um, along with that, you know, when let's say that as an organization, if I'm the one who's running the application, and for whatever reasons one of my nodes go wrong, go bad and the you know, application goes down, um, I'm stuck, right? And then I'm ha I'm having having a downtime. So how StackOS really solves that problem is that there are multiple cluster operators around the world. And if an, if an application cluster fails, it starts to move the application from the one cluster to another one. So it, it basically is able to ensure that our application is, uh, is unstoppable. So you know, that is kind of something unique about that. Um, third, I think one of the critical points, I think how StackOS really differentiates uh, from a lot of these cloud providers is that it makes uh, application deployment anonymous. That means that anyone can you know, deploy an application without sharing their identity and having to you know, um, stick to a specific currency to pay with. Uh, okay, very interesting. Thank you, Vishnu, for joining us today. Thank you very much. products.com thousands of products and Al Simon we we pad inventor company Blockquake is looking to launch its global crypto exchange very soon. So with me uh, to bring us up to date on where Blockquake is, is CEO Antonio Brass, and then also Sam Hyun, uh, the chief strategist. So great to see you guys again. Uh, it's been a long time, and I know we've been through a lot since uh, we last talked. But so Sam, let's start with you. Update us on where things are. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, thanks for having us, Jane. Um, a lot has been developing on on Blockwicks, and we've been essentially working quite diligently on the back end, uh, just making sure that um, you know all integrations are set in stone. Um, you know, long story short, our plan is to get live uh, by the end of this month. So that's uh, a you know we don't have a specific date per se, but you know we are um, extremely confident that we will be going live by the end of this month. So we're extremely excited for that. Um, in terms of, you know, kind of further updates, we are initially going to be offering a, a lot of 
of the op um, traded uh, cryptocurrencies along with stable coins um, as part of our block pick exchange. And we are also looking to kind of have that as one of the trading pair supports with the US dollar. So um, it's important to note that for all of our future customers uh, on the BlockBick exchange that they will actually be getting uh, a multi-currency account for, for the deposit accounts immediately for uh, the six fiat. So the six fiats would actually include the US dollar, the Canadian dollar, the euro, the Great British pound, the Australian dollar, and the Japanese yen. So, um, you know, we do have um, intentions of adding additional pairs um, to the six fiats along with additional cryptocurrencies soon after going live. But, you know, we definitely wanted to have this sort of scale up approach where, you know, we do have, you know, uh, a foundation set first and then kind of aggressively scale up and wrap up as we go live. Well, that was just what I was going to ask you about, because that was one thing I really remember, Antonio, was that you talked about, and you came from like the regulation part of the financial industry, and um, and you really talked yeah. about how you were making sure, um, and this feels like this is like a fluid situation, so um, have you yeah, had particularly. Yeah, particularly for uh, both myself and Sam specifically, we we came from an audit compliance risk background in banking and insurance financial services. And uh, we've dealt with a lot of global regulatory matters and other compliance issues in our in our past life, in our career prior to Blockwake. So um, a lot of that stuff is coming full circle now where we leverage a lot of that knowledge. Okay, very interesting. And congratulations on getting this far. And and um, please come back once you launch and update us and with all the changes that I know you'll be making over the next year. So. Definitely. It's uh, exciting times. I feel like every month is going to be uh, drastically different going forward. <laughs> all right. Best of luck, Sam and Antonio. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions and views expressed do not reflect those of Bloomberg LP, its affiliates, or its employees. Shareholders overall are going to see this as being a really positive move for shareholders.